always starts laughing. That's awesome. Hi, right, it's Lindsay Wilson. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. We are going to cover how to get free high-end leads, and um, we are with my um, amazing clients, um, Holland's leading business coaches. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit and say hi? It's so worth it. Hi, hi. My, my name is Laura, uh, Laura Babilski, and I'm um, a business coach from Holland. And I had thousands of clients and I'm working with Lindsay now two years and completely changed my business. Mm. So I can recommend her to everybody. You're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> so kind. <laughs> Do you want to say hi? Yes. Um, hi, I'm Monique Lenen. I work with Laura. Um, just to make things a bit clear, Laura is not just a business coach, but Thank she's the bus- leading the. business coach in Holland. And I can easily say that because I know it's true. Um, and I'm a business coach with her and a sales coach and uh, do a lot of sales. And and um, like Laura said, we are with Lindsay for a couple of years now, and that completely changed the way we do mm-hmm. things, but it also changed our lives, and, mm-hmm. and that's amazing. And she's going to share some new stuff for you and for us, so we're excited to be here, and, um, and I hope you are too. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so nice, so nice, so nice. So um, my intention today is to talk about where to get free high-end leads, because the truth of the matter is this, that there is an invisible layer of clients that most people don't see. Most of us come to um, business and we think, okay, I'll do ads, I'll do launches, I'll do a podcast, I'll do a blog, I'll do events, I'll do all of these things that I, in my business when I started, did. But then on the flip side, the reality of how money really is made by the people who are really making the most money is not in those ways. And so today we're going to pull the covers off of it. So yes, if you want simply free high-end leads, it's a way to get free high-end leads. But it's also a layer of sophistication in business that most people are not showing. Most of the people that you see that are gurus are not showing actually how they're making cash behind the scenes. And so we're going to talk specifically about that today. And you truly are eavesdropping on content that I am teaching them. So my... um, level of teaching will be at an advanced level and it's interesting because the thing I was thinking about is this that at a certain point because you all do very very well in your business right they're getting ready to pitch a 100k offer they I mean like we could go on and on you had 70 people in a $10,000 program when we first met you've made 400,000 in a weekend like you work two mornings a week now it's astounding it's astounding, right? You come, you came yep. and you'd sold a million and now you've sold a couple million. Yep. Like huge, huge things have shifted. And the reality of the situation is that when people get to seven figures and above, um, it's part of what you teach, but people get a bit dissatisfied, right? And there's a burnout that can happen. And there are loads of people that make seven figures and take home a six-figure salary. Right? They've become a glorified CEO and they're managing a team that they don't really enjoy most of the time. Their hearts aren't happy. And we were talking earlier about they end up at Burning Man or they end up right like falling apart or getting divorced. And so um, another option might be <laughs> to look at the skill set of the things we're going to talk about today about doing business at a super high level because those skills, they not only apply for lead generation, but they apply for everything that one needs to do to be truly free in your business. I work two to four hours a week. I spend most of my time with my kids because that's what I wanted to do. We've done things like had one video that made a million dollars. And I um, won't even speak to the results that other people get, but I just know ongoing for years we've had an average sale of about 50K. And there is not much involved. I still don't have a VA, though I'm on the cusp of getting one because we're going to be really expanding. Um, But there is this very simple, easy way to do business at a supremely high level that not only will set you free, but will set your clients free. Because I think the thing we really want to speak to today, and it's so helpful coaching, right, being with you all here yesterday, because what we start to realize is this, that if you really want global impact, if you really want legacy, It becomes crucial that you have clients that are your peers, that are at that level. Like when you all, can I repeat that 
you all said that I have had a great impact on the way that business coaching is done in Holland. Like, it makes me swoon because I've never even been to the Do you know what I mean? I mean, I think I have some Dutch heritage. Like, how fascinating and fabulous is it, though, that I can have that impact? Right. And we want that for you. We want that for you. Mm -hmm. Because a pile of cash really does not make anyone happy. If anything, my mom says I should teach what happens when people get new money. Because you get the pile of cash and it becomes a big problem. Right? It's not even fun. And you think about quitting. But beyond that is this level where if you had 10 people at 100,000 in your program, and I have friends who've done that in two weeks, right? Like, and we're going to talk exactly about how to do that today. If you had people who were presidents of banks and mortgage companies, influential in medicine and social care, in government, right? Like, in nonprofits, in fashion, you know, in theater. If you had one person from each of those arenas and you taught them how to really fly and how to be free, think about the legacy you could have. It's radically different than thinking about building a business where you go, I'm going to sell a $17 ebook to 5 million people. <laughs> because, like, no. 4 million, 900,000 of them are never even going to read that ebook, right? Mm-hmm. So, this is not just about creating wealth. But this is about creating legacy. So I think when we're all listening today to the different skill set that I'm presenting that's necessary, you want to watch for anywhere where you think, oh, no, I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. I would never do that. Because it's like I, I love the story about Mother Teresa when she was in a room with funders, much like this dining room that we're in right now. They collected all the money that they had gathered for her. And she closed the door and turned to the people inside the room and she said, this is not enough. And made them give her more money for her cause. So if we really want to be having that kind of impact in the world, mm-hmm. I'm not going to make anybody stand up and like close the door and make people give them more money. But we really want to think about what's our mission that we're here for. What are we committed to? And, and what actions can we take? And if any of the actions today that I come up with, you, you, I mean, just apply the actions you need to, right? Like when I first started doing higher end, because I did, uh, oh my gosh, I worked like 90 hours a week at the beginning of my business. Um, someone said, okay, so you should do, you know, a class. It's that typical thing that everybody says about high end. Teach a class for like 5000 to 10000 and then offer them a mastermind on the other end. I had babies. I was like... I'm not doing a class. Like, I don't even want to do that, right? So I just dove in and started offering a a mastermind, and it worked really well. So you don't have to follow exactly what we're suggesting here, but what you do want to think about is all the people that you're not serving. And I think what's the fastest, easiest, most um, love-filled way to get that to them, right? Mind Valley is so nice. I have a product with them, and they say they recently sent something out. I can't believe this. That said, I'm the world's most sought-after sales coach. I was like, wow, <laughs> so cool. But they also say like all these easeful, graceful things in their copy about things. And I think you do want to think there's a way to do business that's elegant. There's a way to do business that is supportive of the people you're here to help and supportive of oneself. And so um, with that in mind, we're going to talk specifically about how to get these higher end leads. And again, grab grab pen and paper. Feel free to jot all this stuff down because this is stuff I've never taught before. It's exactly what we do on the inside of our business. There's no smoke and mirrors. And particularly because I think probably what I excel at more than anything else is helping people break through their blocks, right? So I want you to look at anywhere where I say something and you go, nope, not doing it. Because I promise you inside of that is something. And so we just want to look at those places where you go, absolutely, positively, no. Okay. So um, (laughs) my six-year-old son, we watch this TV show together, Steven Universe, this little cartoon at night. And there are these two kids that work in the donut shop in it. And one of the kids has been abducted to outer space with, like, aliens. I I think that Steven Universe, I think Steven Universe's mom is God, by the way. I think it's a whole story that's about that. My husband defers. But... My son said, well, now that that other guy's gone, right, and it's just the girl working in the donut shop, 
he's like, she gets all the money because she owns the shop, right? And it's all hers. And we're very clear as adults that they're working for somebody else. They're not making a lot of cash, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that most of the ways that we've been taught to do business or look at doing business make us the employees in the donut shop, right? We're on the front end. Mm -hmm. But there's some owner somewhere who's making a crud load more money, and there's somebody who owns that real So when we think about, okay, I'm sick of working in the donut shop, right? Because Sadie and Steven University worked in the donut shop one day. She was like, I'm done. I'm going to be a rock star. We were like, yeah. <laughs> so Sadie can now make big money, maybe, if she gets good management. Um, but we want to think about being the owner of the donut shop. So the first um, technique, it sounds uh, almost too good to be true, but when we think of gathering leads, there are a couple of key ways to do this. The first thing you want to do is think, how can I get thousands? How can I get 20,000 people who want to buy my high-end pro uh, product or program? Because most of the time we think, how can I get one? If I put up this ad and I get one application today and we close them, that'd be amazing. No, how could you get 50,000 leads today? Because if we're asking those kinds of questions at that large sort of quantum level, it's going to be pretty easy to sell one person. So um, if you fill out the form, and, and I think you all have this, and I'll make sure to share it if you don't, um, in the link on the Facebook Live, we'll give you exactly what we did. I, it's like exactly what we sent, all the copy, everything, right? But a super easy way to get loads of high-end leads is just to think about where they congregate. So instead of thinking about where are all of the dog walkers in the world if I serve dog walkers, or where are all the financial planners in the world if I serve financial planners, instead you want to think about where are all the financial planners that could invest 100000 that specifically need what I have, right? Because there are loads and loads of people, for instance, who need the business help that I offer, but perhaps I don't resonate with them, right? So that's fine. I'm not looking for everyone who needs business help. I definitively am not looking for everyone who needs business help because that's not really, I mean, I help people's businesses grow, but I help their lives grow also. So once you start to identify those areas, and, and my hope is that this sort of is a place where you don't know the answer. Otherwise, you shouldn't be listening to me because I wouldn't have anything to teach you. So you want to think about, wow, I have no idea where 20,000 people that need me are. Mm -hmm. Then you want to start to imagine well, where could they be? So, for instance, yesterday we were talking about your potential $100,000 client. Mm -hmm. They have purchased some things in the past, correct? I assume there are other people who've purchased mm -hmm. those things in the past also. So it's plausible that there are email right. lists, yeah. contact lists, mm -hmm. and to be even con completely uh, real... So if they've purchased those things in the past, they have access to that list because they have some power there because they're a buyer and they've been a buyer for multiple years. So you could even say to them, and again, I'm, I'm pushing into those places where we go, no. But you could even say to them, so I would love if you would talk to so-and-so about who I could serve mm -hmm. that they have. Mm -hmm. And that person could make an approach, make an ask for you and get that sent out to an email list that's way more than 20,000 people. Hundreds of thousands, right? So you meet other people. Yes. At least. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. We want to think about relationship because the way that really business is done mm -hmm. is relationship. Like we were talking about the thing yesterday and, and later today we'll cover exactly what to say to close high-end leads. But we were talking yesterday about how trust is crucial at a high level. That if someone's really purchasing something at a very high level, they don't want a payment plan. That's not the thing they're thinking about. They don't want 58 MP whatevers. They do want to know that it's a wise investment. And they do want to know that they can trust you. So it could be as simple as you suggest as someone else's email list, right? And, and I don't want to say that everything is a sale, but everything in a way is a sale. Getting my kids to eat vegetables is a freaking sales job that I can't get done a lot, right? Like, uh, I may be the world's most sought after business sales coach, but there 
in any interaction, you want to think about what is the other person wanting, right? So let's say one of these other people has an email list of 500,000, right? There's something that they care about. Mm -hmm. Now, there's the superficial level, and I'm sure, like, because you're a salesperson, mm -hmm. there's the idea of what we think people want, and then there's really what they want. Mm -hmm. So let's be very real about that for a moment. What people really want, often, is the approval they never got from their father, right? And so what that out pictures as is them on a big stage with a huge audience that loves them, right? They need ego. Um, sometimes what people really want is donations to a nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. They may be at the point in their business where they've realized, I don't really care about all this money stuff, but mm -hmm. I have a limited time left in this world, and I really want to make impact. And so, I mean, if I get emails in my inbox that say, here's somebody, they're awesome, and um, if you connect with them, a donation will be made on my behalf, right? Like, I just think that person's amazing. I don't think that mm -hmm. that person's a jerk for trying to promote someone, mm -hmm. right? We've done a lot of things like that for other people as well. And there's a way to do all of this that contributes towards the greater good. So you want to create a list of like 10 people that you know that have access to the people that you need. And it, so if you're a business coach, right, because I attract a lot of business coaches, does the Lamborghini dealer, right, have business owners who could use coaching? Sure. Does your accountant have a list of people that could use your help? Absolutely. Does, like, here we are um, at a hotel that I come to all the time, and they know me by name, and would they send something out on my behalf? There might be some corporate something that lets them not do it, but certainly they know 50 people who could join my program. Like, I, this is why it's really good to coach. I just need to go talk to the head of the hotel after this and say, okay, so do you like white chocolate or dark, <laughs> right? Or Lamborghinis. <laughs> I will get one for you if you find 50 people that need me, right? Because she certainly knows those 50 people. Aren't we sure? Yep. Right. So we can make an ebook mm -hmm. and a video and a podcast and another book and an Instagram account and try to get, you know, like a TV gig and all these other things. And none of that actually amounts to us closing the people that we really want to close or having the impact that we want to have, right? Mm -hmm. Those are like vanity things to mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. But those aren't really how real things mm -hmm. get done. Mm -hmm. The smartest people that I know in business, the, the business deals that they are making in places that we don't see are monstrous and require none of the front of the donut shop stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, um, it's so interesting. There are all these things that I know about internet marketing, about people who, like, agree not to launch when other people launch and send for other people, right, during when they're not launched. Like, there's a whole systematic way to get things done. So you could do that also, but the level of profit there is pretty slim. And it's a market that's fairly tapped out. I mean, how many of us are really reading emails anymore, anyway? Not so many. So, the relationships that you cultivate in business, I find to be the most fun, right? If we really are the sum of the five people that we spend time with, then me spending the time with the head of this hotel might be something that's really wonderful, right? Mm -hmm. She may know things that I've never even thought about mm -hmm. in terms of this location. We're still fairly new here people here, right? Like, interestingly, I dropped her an email when we had first stayed here, and she said, you're new to the area. If you need um, any recommendations about anything, right? Doctors, friends, happy to do all of that, right? Ooh. And so if I send an email in, right, you should, the kind of service that they're, they're all delighted, right, because the head of the hotel is saying certain things to them. But that relationship... Mm -hmm matters, right? Yeah, yeah. And so in the same way, cultivating relationships with your peers and cultivating it in a way that will give you profit, right? So you're not going to say to them, I'm going to give you 80% of my profit if I sell stuff to your list, right? Like that would not make a lot of sense. But truly with three emails, we made half a million, right? I asked three people to send for us. That was it. Two of them, it didn't work so well. 
and I sent gifts, right? It just didn't happen to be a match because there, I mean, think how many people you dated before you got married. Most of them were not a match. That's mm -hmm. how that works in mm -hmm. terms of conversion. And then it worked wonderfully well with one person who sent. And then I wanted to spend time with my kids, right? So we didn't keep doing it. But I could certainly send those, sorry, my computer went dark for a minute, emails out ongoing. I could hire someone just to find people to send those emails for me, and I could have leads coming in day after day. So again, if you click on the form, and I'll make sure that you all have the content of it also, it's exactly the three emails and what we sent in terms of, of marketing. Now, one crucial piece that I think you must know is this. The marketing that got sent with the email, it wasn't just like Lindsay's cool, right? Go talk to her. It was also like Lindsay's providing something for you to learn from. That marketing, that video that got included in that had already made half a million, mainly to cold leads through paid advertising. Mm -hmm. So it was proven. And even to pull the scenes back a little bit further, right before we sent it, I was planning on sending something else. And then I thought, oh my gosh, wait a minute. I need to practice what I teach. I have something that's proven to convert. It needs to be the thing that goes in there, not some other new crazy thing that I've not tested at all, right? So why don't we take this one video that we know that really converts, put it in these emails that we're not sure if they convert, right? And see what works. And so that worked beautifully together. Mm -hmm. The level of content, the level of marketing that you must provide for a high-end lead must be stellar, right? I am happy to have that video shown on my tombstone when I go. <laughs> I watched that video, seriously, and when I watched it, I know this sounds odd to some people, so you can think of a different word than God, but when I watched it, I felt like God watching me, and I was so proud. I was scream I was like, whoa! I was screaming at the screen because what I'd spoken mm -hmm. transcended my own personal, mm -hmm. like, I want people to buy from me. It was truth. Like in that video, I say, if you are not serving at your highest level, you are wasting space, and like, get off! And, and, I still, it doesn't give me chills as much, but it was complete and utter mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. I had 22 minutes to make a 20 minute video, and so I just made the choice to rock it, right? And so the content that you're sending out, the level at which you're speaking to people, you cannot be phoning it in. Mm -hmm. Because your higher level leads are never gonna do that. It's interesting, so Laura's been with me for years, and so you've purchased plenty from me, right? And we were doing some role playing yesterday. And if I come up to you and I'm like, Laura, so I have this new um, training about free hind leads and like, I think you'll totally like it. It's really, like you don't care. Like none of that no. stuff. But if I'm like, I'm gonna show you how to get your 10, 100K people today. Yeah, that's interesting. Right, <laughs> so the <laughs> way that we speak it mm -hmm. and the way that we teach it has to be high level. Like I'm very clear that in training this today, this is not for beginners. And that's okay mm -hmm. because beginners is not who I serve, yeah. right? So you must speak at the level mm -hmm. of, of the people that will invest at that level, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes utterly genius because it's easier, I think, to just be honest at a higher level, right? But it's, you know, we had a group here last year and I played Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Like, your marketing needs to move people. And with the climate of the world today, if, if you aren't moving people at that level, if you're not serving at that high of a level with your gifts, like, you should get off. Mm -hmm. Because the world is so in need right now. There's no time to futz around, right? And marketing has changed. People don't respond to that, right? Perry Marshall had me on his podcast like a couple years ago. When I first did paid ads, we made like 350,000 in the first 30 days. He was like, what? I was like, yes, because people thought you could just sell like t-shirts and stuff. But it was like, I was a mom with two kids and I didn't have time to mess around. And so we were selling, you know, I had some packages in, in that round was like 50,000. But then I went on from those leads and sold packages that were 130K and we sold out. So I think a lot of it has to do with where you set your sights. And when you set your sights appropriately, if you've decided to change the world, your marketing is not like six easy ways to whatever, right? It just isn't. So, okay. Is this helpful? Let me know. On the, it's helpful to you, all, yes. right? so, which is my biggest yes. concern. Um, feel free to, to comment on the live. I'm sure I'm supposed to like ask you where you're from. or I don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next we want to talk about celebrity clients, which sounds sort of cool, but I think is also something that we really um, 
want to contemplate in terms of influence. So um, I'm like a, a girl from a small town in the Midwest who would like drive two hours to go to rock concerts and I would like spend the time at the rock concerts getting in the front row, right? Like I made it to the front row of Sting. We were in the very top row of a three-tier stadium for Billy Joel and their promoter came around and gave free tickets to the people in the worst seats for the front like two rows so that wasn't even on my own but I like got to touch Billy Joel's leg right they took the people from the back so the people in the front would be so excited isn't that fun we were like oh my gosh Mm -hmm. so in the same way um, there are people that I see often that I want to work with that are meaningful to me that have exposure right Mm -hmm. and so if I partner with them or work with them or contribute to what they're doing. Like I was talking to, about that minister yesterday. Um, it's not always even paid, but it just does my heart good and it's important to me. So I think there's some key things that you want to think about because one of the most influential things that we'll also talk about later this afternoon um, in terms of selling people with marketing these days is testimonials, mm-hmm. right? So somebody was saying something about doing something local yesterday, and I was like, oh, my gosh. If I had to do local events of people who, like, I would never, and I live in a place that probably has some local people who would be interested, but I've never done, like, B&I, Chamber of Commerce. Like, oh, my gosh, I would would rather do anything than try to find, like, 20 people in this geographical area who resonate with me, right? And so if you're thinking of people that have massive influence, um, some of those partnerships ultimately will mean uh, that they can promote you also, and that's irreplaceable, right? Like, some of us are not so, like we haven't spent our time building the ego portion of our business, right? And so um, Bill Walsh, who's a really smart guy, said, if you want to sell to a millionaire, you want to give them something for free. Mm -hmm. because everyone approaches them and wants to sell them something because they think this is a wealthy person, I want to sell them something. And so um, if we think of things like cold approaches, right? So uh, if you're approaching them and you're like, here's my $130,000 package, do you want to buy it? The answer typically is going to be no. However, there's another way to do business here. So if you find people who have large levels of influence that you're in alignment with, right? Like, I think it's very important to be in alignment with them. It is incredibly easy to make that approach and find a way that you can help them and they can help you also. I was um, long ago and far away um, in theater, and I was a documentary producer, and we had an evening where we wanted to get uh, Willie Nelson in a documentary we were doing. Have I told you all this story? And so it was very important to the person who was doing the entire documentary. Mm -hmm. And he had appeared at a political event and was on stage. And there was no way we were going to, do you know what I mean? We just bought tickets like the day before. Like how the heck were we gonna set up a meeting with Willie Nelson? In five minutes I got him to agree to be in the documentary. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna break down that process for you because it's just the sales process that I teach done in person in a few moments. And even if you look at my testimonials, you'll see a number of people who I've done this process with. Because I've want, I truly have cared and wanted a, some reciprocal relationship with, and, and it's worked out abundantly well. There was a spiritual leader who I got to every day be on social media. I got to preach to hundreds of thousands of people every day. There was nothing, like, it was so fun. It was so, I posted once one of the things that they said that I thought was the most genius. People were so mad. It was really interesting, right? But it was like, (laughs) it's a direct quote. Like, what's wrong with people? Um, But there are, uh, and in return, they volunteered to speak at one of my events. And this is when I was fairly new in business and I was making my money from events. And I'll tell you what, I screwed it up. (laughs) <laughs> this person that anybody would love to like have at your event, like come speak at your, do you know what I mean? It was like, and it was, um, it, it's like I'm almost embarrassed to say it, but I just couldn't hold my value in that, right? Their mm-hmm. assistant was like, yes, they'll come speak at your event. And I was like, and I, it was during my grandmother's funeral, right? Like there were some other extenuating, and I was pregnant and I didn't know, right? Um, and so there were some other extenuating things that I just, but I wasn't in a place where I could go, great, this time, this date. Yeah. I just let the ball drop. 
but I had provided a monstrous service. Like if we look at the stats of what happened during that relationship, it's massive what I provided. And there are even other details. I just, I don't like to give away confidential stuff, so I won't go into, but I really had helped, right? And, and in return, I could not receive what was being given back. Had I done that, it, it would have been spectacular, but I also have now learned a lesson, right? So you don't make that same mistake again. So um, being in alignment is important to the approach. So the approach looks like this. It's the same thing as selling. Um, it's really quite easy. So there needs to be a bond that happens, right? That's heartfelt and true. It can't be fake. So my approach to, <laughs> it's so funny, my approach to Willie Nelson was like, you did a concert in my hometown recently and it meant so much to the people there. And it really had, because it's an agricultural community where there had been a lot of struggle. And no one like Willie Nelson ever came to this teeny town. And family members, friends were just like, it meant so much to them, right? And so I just planted myself outside of the dressing rooms after he was done playing. And he came out and had like, seven feet to walk from the dressing room to an escalator and then we would have not been able to get him. And so on his way out, right, there were other people waiting and I just had to wait and he said hello to them. And I stopped him right before the I like, I have chills. And I said, I, I took his hand, right, because he held his hand out and I just held on to his hand while I said, you did a concert in my hometown recently and it meant so much to the people there. Now, I knew that that meant something to him also, right? Because I knew his heart, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I knew that was a place of connection. So I went for a place, I wasn't like, your hair is beautiful, and I want your conditioner, right? Like, I went to a place, <laughs> the deepest place where the two of us meet, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And he stopped. And he stood there, and um, I said, we're doing a documentary on, and I told him the topic, which I also knew was a topic that was very meaningful to him, mm -hmm. but he was way beyond at that point where we thought we could ask people. And, um, and I said, and we would meet you anywhere to have just a few moments, because I think your voice is really important about this. And he turned to the woman beside him, who was his wife, which I did not know, and he said, um, give them your cell, right? I still have Willie Nelson's wife's cell number in my phone <laughs> because she's the one who makes the things. Then he said, um, tomorrow, yes. Wow. wow. And got on the escalator to go. But it was everything that was necessary for that. Now, it may not have gone well. So I really wrote down first that you have to be in alignment with people, right? Mm -hmm. So there have been people who've approached me um, or people that I've gotten midway through where I thought they have a lot of influence, right? and I could really help them, and I've turned them down. Like, there've been things where it's like, oh, this is so not what I thought this was going, like, no thank you, right? Like, I was supposed to be, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna give names, I was supposed to be a blogger for this really popular star at one point, and I got started on it, I was like, oh, no way, <laughs> like, no thank you. Um, but with him, it was perfect alignment, right? And, and was it helping his mission in the world? Absolutely, because the topic that we, we were doing the documentary on was something he wanted to speak out about, right? And so um, that, right, if you get a testimonial from Willie Nelson, if you get um, someone like that promoting your work, et cetera, right? Because that may not be your life's thing, wanting to like get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of fans, but having someone promote in that manner is irreplaceable. And you really do want to think about what do they want and what do they need, right? So it wasn't like he was going to come speak on hair conditioner, which he didn't care about. This was a topic that we knew was absolutely in alignment with his heart, and we were just not going to jump lower. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, a huge thing you want to think about, is I think you want to think about where in your business are you setting your sights too low? Where are you settling? Where are you not jumping high enough, right? And we were talking before about that feeling of, oh, I'm nervous and I don't know if I should do this, and I don't know if I should do that, right? Is the sign that you're having, it's, it is breakthrough. Breakdown is, is right before breakthrough. So you want to be uncomfortable in your business. But I think, like at the end of my days, like definitely, definitively, I do not want to be a glorified CEO, right? Like there's a certain level that your business gets to and what you can do is spend all of your time being unhappy. 
it's, I think, worse than being broke and being at the beginning of your business, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You get to spend time now doing, do you want to speak about that at all? On the two mornings you're not working? You don't have to. I put you totally on the spot. I want to heal people with, with Jesus. And uh -huh. what does that mean to you in your life? Everything. I only want to do that. And also help my clients, of course. But right. It's so fulfilling to do that. And it's like, would you rather be podcasting five more days a week? Or would no. you rather be healing people? Healing people, of course. And at the end of your days, right? Are you going to think, wow, I wish I'd healed less people? No. No. <laughs> no. 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 And when you first came, you wanted time with your mom, right? Yes. And the other day we were on the phone and your mom was in the other room. Like, you've not only gotten time with your mother, but you've gotten to go beyond that. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Because you've done the work. Because you guys have taken the leaps. I say, sell a 50K program and you all go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? It works. Right. Yes, because yes. it's challenging. Yeah. 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 But there's a life for all of us out there that's bigger than what we're even allowing ourselves yeah. to want. And what was fulfilling about that is that our clients get bigger results as well. That's right. Yeah. It's not about selling more, getting more dollars in or euros in our case. No. It's that our clients getting bigger results and they are getting bigger results with their clients. It's yeah. like it's that like kind a, of process it's is going on. Abs I, I think it's brilliant. I think it's so interesting. It's even, mm -hmm. we were talking this morning about adding additional layers to what you're doing. And like, so this year I've learned to meditate, right? I've, for 30 years, people have been like, meditate, meditate, meditate. Even my medical doctor is like, are you meditating yet? And I'm always <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> and this year, I'm like in love with meditation, right? And so I think meditation really helps me. Like if I take a couple of minutes and really get connected and get past my fear and then I take an action, I'm very like clearly able to do it and I'm not stuck in being afraid. And so I think, well, should I add that to my business or should I not add that? And it's like, I definitely should add that because it's part of what's getting me results, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So I think that as we take bigger steps and we get bigger results, Absolutely. Like if you're with a mentor who's not growing, I'll tell you what's going to happen to you. You're not going to grow mm -hmm. either. No. And your clients no. definitely won't grow. Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. So let's talk about two more things. Am I, I'm doing okay on time even. Is this helpful? Yes. Yeah. Very yeah. Helpful. I think that because we have our minds that are set to a certain trajectory and we think this is all that's possible, right? And we think, how can I color in the lines, right? Mm -hmm. So how can I consult or coach and follow what other people are doing? But the truth of the matter is this. If you look at anyone that you really admire, they haven't colored in any lines. They didn't copy anybody's funnel. They didn't copy anybody's messaging. They didn't listen to other people's stuff that they were supposed to do, right? Like no recording artist on the radio that sounds like somebody else is as popular as the, like Adele, right? Like mm -hmm. 89 people try to sound like Adele. Adele wins, right? Yes. And Adele's doing what Adele is supposed to do. Adele broke it wide up and there are 98 reasons why she shouldn't have mm -hmm. been so popular. So I think we're required to be exactly who we are, doing exactly what we're meant to do. And I think that if we add, um, I mean, I really struggled in my business for a while because I couldn't figure out how to do this like at a quantum level. Like I couldn't figure out like what's the easy, fast way to do it. And so let me say this also because I think this is important and this isn't here. There has to be a level of commitment where you are unstoppable, mm -hmm. right? Because I could have said to you all, okay, here all, here's the possibility for your business. I think you could do all of these great things. Go do these great things. I love it when you guys write down. I know I said something good. And um, you guys could have said, no, I'm not going to do it, right? I'm going to fly home to Holland and I'm not offering a 50K. <laughs> it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. But you all said yes, and you all did it. And so that's... That's on you all. And I think that it also speaks to what we'll speak about this afternoon in terms of when you're taking on clients, you don't want to take on clients just to have cash. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to look at this as a practice of, 
oh my gosh, Lindsay said 10 people at 100,000. I don't even know one person, right? So let me try to just find the second person. Like, like if we come from that kind of energy, like, oh, oh, that's not what works, right? Like my daughter is sure she is a rock star. We have this mic with us today that's sticking up. I didn't even explain it. And we got it out last night and we were practicing like how to hook up everything so I knew. And my daughter goes, that's a microphone? And she's five. And we were like, yes. She's like, let me sing. Like she is just certain that she is a rock star. She has no qualms about it, no questions about it at all. And so then she is. Mm -hmm. But if I sit around and I'm like, oh, that's a microphone and I'm terrified you won't get the results, right? The reason why we sold a million from one video is because I said, we're doing this and I'm committed to it. There, is all, uh, there are all those great quotes, but there is always the appearance of a mess right before the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And the thing that you have to do in cultivating greatness is recognize that that mess is the sign that you're absolutely on the cusp of it and you just have to go a little bit more, right? Yeah, you just have to sit through the mess. So. Okay, let's talk about LinkedIn and YouTube leads also. So um, LinkedIn is pretty straightforward, right? You can certainly do paid advertising on LinkedIn, but you don't need to. If you reach out to people, I know people who have made massive deals through LinkedIn, like crazy, insane. Like I know companies that have, like, I can't even tell you, just because they paid for the expensive membership on LinkedIn so that they can reach out to anyone. Because the thing is this, if you reach out to someone and you offer exactly what they need and they believe you, which is really you believe you, they're going to say yes, right? I use this example all the time, but when I was planning for my wedding, if anyone would have shown up anywhere and said, Lindsay, I have everything you need for your wedding, write the check. I would have been like, oh my gosh, here. I'm so excited, right? But no one did that. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out ways to have access, but in a day and age where you can inbox anybody, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that hard to be able to go, who are 50 people on LinkedIn that look like they need me? Why don't I send something to them saying, hey, are you interested in like 10 times in your sales? Now don't use that one because that's like really overplayed, <laughs> which leads to the next aspect of this, which is that your languaging has to be the languaging that they use in their mind. And this is where most people fail with high-end leads. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about the money that they can get from other people, but they don't think about what needs to be said mm -hmm. to actually have that happen. So it was so interesting because we're just getting ready to, well, we actually are launching a lot of YouTube ads. And right before this happened, because this is what happens when you're in alignment, somebody like just on YouTube where we've never really done, I mean, I have videos, I need to take them off from like 10 years ago. They entered stuck at six figures. I was like the top thing that came up. I was the only thing that came up because that's the exact pain that they had in their mind. They're stuck at six figures, right? Mm -hmm. And he's amazing. He's an e-commerce god. Like he's spectacular. And he just, he needed to not be stuck at six figures anymore. Mm -hmm. So he entered that. He saw my video. He signed up immediately. So the language that you use has to speak to people at that level and what their pain is, right? Mm -hmm. And so someone who's, just starting like a business where they haven't cultivated a lot of success in another arena has a dramatically different view of starting a business than someone who like Rose, right? Who was a phenomenal lawyer before she started coaching, right? We wouldn't say to her, are you scared of getting your first client? Right? Cause that's not what she's thinking at all. Mm -hmm. She's thinking like, how do I generate a whole new line of income that will meet my current like mm -hmm. huge, legacy, income, all of that sort of thing. So the languaging that you're needing to use is important because all of us get those messages in our like LinkedIn and everywhere that's like, do you want me to 10 times your sales? And it's like, no, I know that somebody told you to say that, right? That's off of somebody's template. But if you send something to someone that says, are you tired of being stuck at six figures? We're at least getting closer, mm -hmm. right? Because it starts to be that language that people are using in their head. Um, it's that difference between like, I love to use dating analogies, but like if somebody approaches you at a bar and they're like, Hey baby, what's up? You're like, no, right? Like this is obviously not the one versus if somebody walks up to you and says, 
it's really boring here, right? I so wish I were watching the Philharmonic tonight, right? And you love the Philharmonic more than anything, then you're like, whoa, finally, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody that's closer to what, what I want. So um, we'll, we'll talk much more about YouTube here because we're going to do some stuff for it later. But just to know, um, at a, specifically a time when paid lead generation is getting really tricky and people's accounts are getting shut down a lot, Yes, are these all ways that you can get free leads? Of course, but are they viable ways for you to continually get leads? Absolutely. I think that it's important to look at not just today where you're getting leads, but I think it's important to think about, okay, so five years from now or 10 years from now, where do I want to be? Mm -hmm. and, and what kind of online process do I wanna to have to support not just this year, but next year and the year after that, right? And so um, I, I think it's an important time to learn to diversify if you are doing paid lead generation because I think we've all seen um, big shifts in what's going on. I think you'd have to be not paying attention to sort of see that. Um, so I'm excited that, that we're doing uh, that and I'm sure I'll have more to teach you all about that later this afternoon and then also ongoing here on Facebook. So um, the last thing that we put in there is um, to talk about the place where, <laughs> I love this, the secret place where they all are online. So at 1.30 today, we're going to train more about that because we're going to talk to you about how to close them because here's the deal. I'm going to be really frank. It is a huge pain for people that they think that their problem is they don't have high enough in leads. They think their leads aren't great, right? Like that's a very typical pain that everyone thinks. But it is not actually the problem a lot of times because, I'm just going to be me for a moment here, if I handed, like all of you who are watching, 25 really high-end leads right now, you probably wouldn't be able to close most of them because there is a way to handle that conversation. There is a way to put together an offer that they want because the last thing, I'll tell you what, like let me just say for myself as a buyer, right? Because as we're um, behind the scenes for the past six months really getting ready to explode, I looked in a number of different places to purchase a number of different things and boy was it a disaster, right? I would get on the phone with people and I would be like, oh my gosh, I'm just praying that they have the answer. And then they wouldn't know as much as I knew about lead generation or something and or video marketing and I was just like oh my gosh like this is so disappointing and I would even be like maybe I'll just give them the money so I can hang out with my kids and maybe they won't blow it but at a certain point you go okay this is I can't even I can't do that anymore because that's it's not fun to manage people who require a lot of time when they're not getting those kinds of results so it's imperative that um, you are offering I'm just going to give you some tips because we're a couple minutes early, which I never am. So, and this will be helpful for you all too, I think. So, for instance, um, at the highest level, people don't want to do a lot of work or have a lot of homework or um, have 58 things they need to watch and 92 things they need to implement. Right? It's why we structure this mm -hmm. when you all are here that we actually complete the tasks you need to do. They don't take much time, but they're done. Rather than sending you home with this huge freaking list of stuff to do, because you don't want to do that. That's the last thing I want to do. If I fly somewhere and go do something, like don't send me home with a crud load of homework. Mm -hmm. And the reality of the situation is this too, that, yeah, I mean like heart surgery, it takes a while, I guess, right? I'm not a heart surgeon. I don't think you can speed through that. It's a particular thing. but. Business coaching doesn't take that much, right? If you've got one good piece of collateral and some smart strategy and some good relationships and some great sales techniques and an offer that people want to buy, you're sort of done. You don't even need a website. I mean, it's re this is not brain surgery, what we are doing here. It really, it really is not. And so I think you want to think about um, and even... I'll speak to this, which I never normally would, but this is why it's so cool to do it this way instead of just at home alone. Um, so then people start to think, okay, if I'm going to do a high-end offer, what I have to do is I have to do a lot of stuff for people, right? 
because they're paying me for my time. I can't receive $100,000 from someone if I'm not actually giving them 92 things. But I got to tell you, that's not what people want, right? Like when people were trying to sell me earlier in the year, they'd be like, and you can go through our curriculum. It just makes me want to throw up. I was like, I don't want to go through your curriculum. I just want to hand you a pile of cash, right? And so um, people at the highest level, you really want to think, what's the least amount of time that I need with them that will get them the maximum results? And alternatively, you want to think from your own perspective, what's the least amount of time that I need to invest to get them the maximum results? Because time is the commodity at a higher level. And so I think the error that most people make very often is they think, oh, we need to do 92 things. So even what I would say is for you all, the current thing that you're pitching for six figures for someone, I would say for the next one, we want to do much less than that even. Because the truth of the matter is this. Like you said, both of you said this yesterday. It was so helpful. This is why it's great to have clients. I was saying something about Facebook ads, and both of you said, yes, but Lindsay, you'll say one thing, one sentence that changes everything. And that's what we love, right? You can spend the whole day showing us Facebook ads, that's fine. But that's not what we really love. It's that one shift, right? So even for the clients that you're preparing to get, what they need, because they have no idea how to work two mornings a week mm -hmm. and find what they're really divinely meant to do and go do that. They don't have a clue. They look at their future and they think the next 20 years... I'm just going to have to answer more emails and hire more people and spend more time at the office and I really want to be on my boat and I really never see my kids and I like my dog so much and my dog misses me, right? Like, And so the shift that they need there is not 92 more emails and 58 more people to interact with because the truth about business is this, that struggle is optional. Mm -hmm. And if you're a business coach that's teaching people how to struggle more, no wonder your business is full of struggle. Like, I just don't even want it. I think the biggest blessing in a very odd way for me has been that a year ago or so, we had some health difficulties in my family, and anything that was optional just had to go out the window because I, wasn't, I didn't have the bandwidth for it. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, my gosh, I don't really have to work more than four hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it comes in the form of like, oh my gosh, this is not fun. But then it goes like, wait a minute. Now my life is normal again. And I still don't have to work more than four hours a week. Like, that's awesome. Right? Yeah. Right. And we don't need the four hours a week with you. No. We just need like four minutes. That's mm -hmm. right. And and it turns our lives around. That's right. Right? Yeah. It's a, it's a great learning. Because most of us are pitching an offering where it's like, okay, here are 55 things I'm going to give you. for the And people are like, oh, no. I don't believe that they can change my life because I don't. That's not what I want. Mm -hmm. I want more ease. Mm -hmm. I want more freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want it more elegant, right? So it's fascinating. I'll just say this also, that it's fascinating to me sometimes when I get on phone calls with people who I think, oh, my gosh, they really need me. And they'll defend keeping busy. Yeah, yeah. And they'll defend doing all the other stuff. So, I mean, like, God bless you. Everyone, what It's like an say? identity. Yes. It's like we, we have our identity of working hard and then we do good. And they feel this void of doing nothing. They yeah. feel afraid of that. Because then they have to think about what they really, who they are and what they want. Oh, exactly. <laughs> that, that feels uncomfortable, thinking yeah. about who you really are. Yeah. It's like my mom always used to say, no one ever dies of working too hard. Mm -hmm. So it's like a rhythm, you know? It's so hard to unlearn that, yeah. right? Yeah. Could mm. that there was you. <laughs> right, 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 right. Mm. It's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's an interesting thing because it even then I think, because here we are, you know, together, not really doing a Facebook Live, just eavesdropping into things then I think in my business I go okay, oh, okay so that's really important information that you all just shared with me because you really want to listen to your clients and I think okay so what they're saying is that in my marketing I even want to think about not just saying how to get free high-end leads mm -hmm. but it's like how to get free right right because otherwise I'm going to attract a lot of people who just want free high-end leads and those aren't necessarily my people mm -hmm. I need people who are brave, yes. mm -hmm. who really want to be free.
Yeah. But the beauty of that is when you call in the people who are really your divine right clients, right? Then, like, it's it's just a joy to be with you all because you all go and you do amazing things that really lift me up in a way that I can't while I'm sitting here with my kids too, right? It's like when we had somebody in our group sell three $300,000 packages, I was like at a meditation garden with my children, right? And just checking on Facebook to see. She like closed a million in a day. It was like perfect. I get to stare at the ocean and be completely present with my children. Mm-hmm. And I have my, you know, other parts of my personality mm-hmm. being fulfilled mm-hmm. by these clients of mine who go out and do these right. amazing things. And because we were in your... In your uh, program with that client mm. that in you know that had an influence on us as well sure because mm. i was overwhelmed like wow can that right. happen and then we thought how can we make that happen right mm-hmm. so that changed right. too it's just mm. you know. i think i think it also speaks to and this is something so um we're going to finish up here but i think that it speaks to something we want to contemplate in your marketing for years as well which is at at a very high level what Well, at every level, what people crave is community, right? Mm -hmm. With peers, Mm -hmm. where they feel seen, heard, and known. Mm -hmm. And so for some people, being in a group with people who are selling a million in a day, that would feel uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or not what they care about. Mm -hmm. Mother Mm -hmm. Teresa might be like, that's not a mastermind for me. That'd be okay, right? But I think we want to think about the fact that when you cultivate a community of people that are at a certain level the ability for people to be around other people like that is priceless is priceless okay so uh we'll be back after lunch we'll talk about how to close those people um we'll pull together what we're going to record later for you all for your marketing and we'll also pull together the offer over lunch Um, if I told you all now exactly where to find these people, you wouldn't believe me and you wouldn't do it. So <laughs> I want everyone, if you're coming back later this afternoon, to figure out what really is your offer, who really are you meant to serve, and then I'll tell you where you can find them. It's like when I used to be a horrible dater, I thought the problem was the men. They're bad. They're bad. No safe men. That was my thing, right? And the reality of the situation was that I wasn't safe. And so once I became the woman... Then I looked around and I could see so many men in my life who'd been safe that whole time, but I just couldn't see it. Mm-hmm. So the requirement here, quite frankly, is for us to change. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll move forward from there. Yeah. Okay, if, if you want my team to talk you through exactly where your high-end leads are, if you're like, okay, I'm done, I don't want to listen to her anymore, I'm sold on it, you can just click the form and, and they'll be in touch with you too. Um, it is specific for different people where you want to cultivate relationships and that sort of thing. Um, but it's it's so doable. It's un, It's just as easy to make the choice to have a business full of joy and freedom. It's even easier in some ways yeah. than it is to make the choice to have a business of struggle. Yes. So yeah. I would suggest you all do that. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Thank you all. <laughs>